ahead and get started. Are y'all logged into command? Oh yeah, perfect. Okay, so we are gonna be focusing on the designs app today. One thing that I'm gonna show you guys that's important that's not in the designs app, but that's important to make sure is completed before we um, you know, get too much into designs is your marketing profile, which should be pretty much all completed because I do set all that up when, before I like do your onboarding with you, so I try to have all that in there, but it's good to check and make sure everything's correct. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to um, your name in the top right corner, yeah. and then you're gonna go down to settings. And then when that loads, you're looking on the left side for connect settings. Mm -hmm. Yep, marketing profile right there. So just give this a little scroll through, make sure your photo's there, your information's correct, everything is. Um, and you don't necessarily have to have something there. Yeah. The only reason I put this there was I was trying to, I was working to see where that comes on to and stuff like that, but generally speaking, the majority of people don't have that okay. unless you kind of create a logo for yourself or something, okay. which you totally can. Well, I have my little house that I put on the back of my yeah. business card. Can I put that there? Yeah, you could. I mean, where does that end up showing up? Yeah. So it shows up um, in a couple little places on the website mainly and okay. in an email campaign that you might do, it would show up at the bottom of it. Okay. And then it's also going to be available for you to use on any of the designs that you create. So. This is one of the benefits of having this all set up is anything you put in here, it's gonna show up in your kind of library to utilize at any time. So if you wanted to put it on like a social media post or something like that. Okay. I have no credentials. <laughs> Which one's that done? Oh, designations and credentials. So you don't really have to have anything there. I literally just put like my title there, but um, designations and things like that, those will come we over time. Listing agent of our right. month. That's no, right. We are in the presence of greatness. That's <laughs> not a, you know, like a sign or something or whatever. So, and my just, bio now I think is all sneaky. That, you know, because we create one and then, then you kind of look back at it and you go, oh. Recreate it again. <laughs> yeah. Just make some edits to it when you want to, you know? Just like kind of, um, I don't know, weather has been, okay, I don't know what that is. Um, so, um, make sure mainly that things like your contact info are correct on here. Um, email address, phone numbers, website, um, <clears throat> office information. It should be, but I have been known to be typing really fast and entering that stuff and met, like put a wrong digit or something. So, don't put it past me there. So, just double check all of that as you kind of scroll through. <clears throat> And even though you'll see that the company logo looks really stretchy here, yeah. it's it's going to look totally normal on anything you put it on. So don't worry about that. Just disregard it. I don't know why it shows up like that, but it looks perfectly normal on your websites and things like that. And I never figured out how to get my LinkedIn in. You know, we did, um, like, on the social. Uh-huh. I don't know what my... Can you uh, go to your LinkedIn profile and just copy the link? So if you're going to copy and paste it, you'd want to go to it on LinkedIn on the computer. Um, that won't really affect much for design things, so we can look at that separately because, okay. yeah, we're just focusing mainly on things like contact information that you're going to, if you need to easily pull it onto a design, you can. Okay. <clears throat> and then if you made any changes, make sure to save it at the bottom. If you didn't, you don't have to click save. <clears throat> so from there... We're going to go over to design. So that's the little square with a paintbrush on the bottom left. That's our designs app. So in designs, you have a lot of different things that you can do. Our main focus today is going to be like social print type designs because those are created in the same way. But if you click this little plus sign in the bottom right corner, that's okay. Um, the little oh, square with the paintbrush. Paint okay. Yep. So the little uh, circle with the plus sign in the bottom right corner 
if you click that, you're going to see a couple different options here. So um, there is an email designs editor. It's a little different than what we're going to be looking at today. I generally do a completely separate class on that because it's a, it's just functions a little differently than what we're going to look at today. Um, but just know that is something that I teach on as well. Um, nice kind of email designs that you can send out to people. Um, so our main focus today will be the second two. Um, we'll typically stay in social, but I'll show you the print ones. They also function the same way as far as how you edit them and things like that. So social and print. Um, video, this will be built out a little bit more um, at some point in command. So right now there's these cute little neighborhood videos that you can make um, in it. And you can also import a PDF and make it editable in here. So if for some reason you had something that you um, had used before in another system or anything like that, if you had a good quality PDF of it, you could actually upload it and it would make um, most of the elements on it editable, like the text and things like that. So if you ever ran into a scenario like that, you can use that. So we're gonna again focus on social and print. At the bottom, you'll see there's this checkbox that says import photos and text from a listing. If you're going in here and you know that what you're creating right now is going to be about a specific listing, you can check that and it will prompt you to search for that listing prior to the design. And so it'll already have everything pulled in. You don't have to click this though. You can access all of that inside the designs editor. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that as well. Um, because basically what it does is it connects through the KWLS, which is the Keller Williams Listing Service, pulls in any listing in there, pictures, basically every bit of MLS information. Wow. And you can simply swap it. That. Yeah, you can swap like the stock photo, let's say in one of these, just swap it out with it from the MLS so you don't have to go in and out. Um, uploading things from your computer all the time and things like that. If it's already active in the MLS, you could do that. So I'm going to show you all of those different things. So <coughs> what we're going to do to get into there first, I'm going to click social. Do you want me to click it too? Yes, absolutely. And you can do either social or print. We're going to go into social this time. You'll notice the editor is the same. It just gives you different options. So I'm going to then click next. Oh, no. <laughs> so this is what you will see load. We're not gonna we're not gonna focus on this just yet. We're gonna talk through a couple good setup things to make like your you know when you come in here and create materials, make that your time more effective. So you have three options up here. So templates is where it defaults to every time. So that's where we're gonna look through these in just a minute. All the different types of templates that you have. My designs is going to show you designs that you have created. So anything that you've like worked with in here, you'll see it here. But you can also start blank here as well. So if you're ever like, I'm not getting, I'm not inspired by anything in here. I've got this vision in my head of exactly what I want. You can start blank and you can choose it, um, what type of design you're creating. Is it for Instagram, that would be a social square, because squares are best for Instagram. Yep, and they're sized perfectly, whether it's a flyer, a postcard, oh, yes, yeah, so many square, things. Square? I didn't know that. It is, yes. LinkedIn, so, LinkedIn covers. Lots of, so they make it sized, yep, postcard, bifolds, trifolds, bifolds in the ledger size, so literally anything you want to create. And, this is starting a blank one, but we're going to look through all the great templates because those are what can help marketing not feel as overwhelming. But this is where you can come and start fresh. Now, my assets up here, I wish they had a different name for that. I know. Because. My, 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 my assets. Uh, uh, assets. Uh, I'm like, that could be better there. That name could be better. Okay, so what this is, though, is it's, it's like a... Um, kit for your brand. So colors that you use frequently in your designs, if you want to upload your own fonts to it, logos you use. So we're going to look through the majority of these. So like you'll see here, it starts with colors and fonts. And I've actually added like kind of our KW color palette here. Okay. So the red, the black, the gray. What that means is when you're creating things, those colors are going to show up and you're not going to have to search for them all the time. So 
Again, it's all about making things like quicker and efficient. What color is, is the red? Is it like a, there's a two so, five five it actually, when you're in here and you go to do the plus sign, so the way that I, could you try? I don't know why she started listening to me. So you have to change it to clicking on this bottom thing to hex. And I actually do have the, I have the color code okay. for the red, so I can tell you. You have to keep clicking on that bottom thing, and I'm going to actually show you what the color is. Okay, so right here on this arrow? It doesn't look like it's clickable, but it's where it says RGB. You click it again, and it says this. I don't know what that one means. And then it'll say hex. Wait, did you see it? There it goes. Yeah, so hex. So then she's, oh, it's like this. Now you're going to go up here, and we're probably going to put in something, a different code. Let's see if it actually lets me paste it. Can I? Yeah. So click on that. Do we have to use, oh, it's a silly question, we probably should incorporate Hello like, and Thread and all here? our stuff, right? Um, just one second, let me put okay, this in sorry. here, sorry. Because it won't let me copy and paste it. Oh, okay. <laughs> What is that? CE011F. I think is what it is. So that is the Keller Williams, like the specific Keller Williams branded color. Let me make sure. Yeah. CE011F. Oh, it's zero, not O. Correct. Um, so what did you ask, Jada? Um, CE011F. Do we have yes. to have do that? Do we have to use those colors? Not necessarily. Um, so you're going to notice in a lot of the templates, they're designed primarily with a lot of the Keller Williams colors in it. Doesn't mean that, for example, you have to always have red in it or anything like that. Um, so in mine, I just put primary colors that, so that they would use in here. Um, but yeah, like if you kind of, if your branding tends to be a little more neutral and so you use more of like just the blacks and the grays and things like that. And then maybe occasionally you use the KW logo with the red on it to kind of pop. And, and we actually have six transparent logos. Um, if you didn't already have them, I recent them out yesterday in anticipation of this class because I'm going to show you where you can put them in here because I use the different ones all the time of those because sometimes the typical red and gray one doesn't work on what I'm making because a lot of times I'm like, you know, if something's got like a black background, it feel, it doesn't really stand out. So I like to use like the all white one on something that's black or vice versa. If it's just a white background, I like to use the black logo. Um, so you can kind of kind of play around with it there, but you can add those colors to it. So I don't have the specific color codes for like the gray and stuff. There is a whole, there's like a Keller Williams style guide that is very long, so I honestly never looked at it all. But it that's where I found the red color code, so it does have the other ones. So it doesn't, again, have to be exact. But doing that red one will at least help it match the logo if you are using that. Um, so basically just colors that you use commonly. Um, if you are someone who likes to download fonts and maybe you've got some specific ones that you like for your branding, you can actually upload them down on this bottom part, that little upload button. So um, I love different fonts, so I like to download them a lot on dafont.com. I don't know why it's called that, but um, it is just DA font. Um, lots of great ones on there if you find don't find something that you love in here. Um, and you can upload them on here. So just make sure if you download fonts, they are free for like personal and business use, because there are ones that might be just free for personal use. So if you are using it for advertising, be wary of that. So the great thing about everything that's already in designs is that it is fully usable for your marketing purposes. So the next thing on the left is logos. So <clears throat> this is where you might get in there and you might just see one logo right now, which is the primary one you have. And you can actually upload all the other ones like you'll see mine. The little gray and white squares in the background, that just means it's transparent. Every logo that I um, give you guys is transparent so that way it doesn't have like the white box behind it. It just looks fluid in all your designs. So, Sorry, I've got that here. Okay. 
Perfect. Those are just demo. <clears throat> so if you only have one of them and you want to upload more of them, you simply do this upload button over here on the right, and you can grab them from multiple places. Generally, you're probably grabbing them from your computer, so you would click My Device, and then you can just upload them from there. So, oh, what a cute house that is in there. Was that your? Oh, yeah, that's your picture. That's Pat's oh, new yeah, Facebook cover. So yep, funny. there's the there's the one you sent me. Oh, yeah, it's not. Um, I, I got it off the internet. Oh, I got mine, yeah. <laughs> Right, it's your business page. It's advertising. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can upload, you can have all of those logos in there that you want. Also, if you had like, you know, a personal logo that you're using kind of for yourself or something that you create, you can put that in here as well. Um, so you have to upload them. So they don't automatically appear there. That's this upload button over there on the right. And where do I get those from? Well, so I actually sent an email yesterday with all of them, just kind of covering my base with that, because I send them to you when you join, but I know that people get new computers and things like that. And so I actually resent them to the whole office yesterday. So if you go to that, there's six of them all right attached. You're, you're send them to you or you <clears throat> so you'll just download those to your computer and then you can upload them all into here. Thank you. You're welcome. And then I think the three dots there you can just rename or delete any. Do you ever lose those logos on your computer and you need to grab one for something that you're sent? Maybe you're having something created by someone else elsewhere, like a business card or a sign, and you need to grab the logo. You can actually re download it from back here. So they'll always stay in designs for you, too. So it gives you a download button there. <laughs> so continuing down the left side, you have smart text. So smart text is different fields from your marketing profile that you'll see here. And you can also add fields for yourself. So things that you would use frequently on a design. There are some of these you may not use, but like it's got the office address on it. So if you had to put that on something, say you were making, um, you know, listing presentation, different flyers in here, those kind of things, you would have all of that office information on it. Instead of having to type it all out, because again, it's all about saving time, you can click that on here. So I have deleted some of them that autofill into mine, so y'all, we might have different ones, like if y'all are looking at yours. Um, but you can also create new fields up in the top right. The little buttons are very small, but it says new field. And you can choose what it is, so whether it's a link to, say, your Facebook page, you can make that field there for your Facebook. Just so, I mean, what would you do? Like a link to your Facebook page, Facebook. that, that facebook.com slash hackgate or whatever it is. Like, the, so the link that you have pasted in your marketing profile, things like that. If you were going to be putting that on, you know, putting a link oh. in, like just oh. to show what the name of your business page is so somebody could go search it, that kind of thing. So you could do that for different pieces of social media. Jennifer, the zip code, isn't it uh, the 11, not 12? Yes. Okay, I was just making sure. Whoops. I, I type it wrong all the time. You do. Because I don't. I get so confused because it's like 37312 is just right down the road. I know. Like, sweet, sweet. So sweet, sweet. Sweet, sweet. That's so weird. I would click it and edit it. It's weird. So another, uh, I was meeting with Calvin and Anna Johnson earlier today, and their address was pulling somewhere, and it was pulling it like with the sweet three hundred, sweet three hundred on it, like that. It was super I guess weird. I, just start over. <laughs> I think you can press. You edit yeah, you yeah. can click the three dots on it, and then you can edit it, and then it has it down at the bottom. So you can add it. Then I think it should let you. Yeah. So it just has it on like the line two down here is how it has it. 
So basically what these would allow you to do is you can click on like quick text and then you can just click these things and they appear on the image and then you can size them appropriately, everything like that. So <clears throat> are we good with, with the smart text? Or y'all need another minute? Editing on anything on that? Can you get the box and then name it whatever you want? I think so. Yeah. You just do new field. Then use it. New text. Then new, this new. one, yeah, new field, and then the very bottom, new oh, text. Okay, no. So if there was something that it wasn't applicable to any of those, but you put it on there all the time, um, then or frequently enough that it would be easier to just click and it add it. Like the disclaimer, you must have created that. Well, I think I did. Um, because, and I did it this way because there is a, there is a way in designs already that has the company disclaimer, but it just says each office. It doesn't say each Keller Williams oh, office. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> generally in Tennessee, we're supposed to specify the company in the disclaimer. So I, that's why I created my own. Okay. Um, so not a bad thing there to do that. <clears throat> <laughs> yes, double check me there. Now I can my, myself double checking. Like, yeah, I always spell that one wrong. <laughs> so the last two over here on the left are images. So you should see your headshot pull over here as long as it was in command. Um, and if there happen to be other images that you use frequently, did you just edit it? Is that what you said earlier? Uh, yeah, but my image is not. I mean, I just can just upload it, but it's weird. It is weird that it just has a blank image of it. And it's making me a man. <laughs> Again? Again? Oh, no. Again. Yeah, upload it in there, and let's see if when we go on to a design, it pulls in. Okay. So also here, other than just your headshot, this is a great place if you have images that you would like, that you feel like you kind of figured are like your brand and that you use often. Like, is there a picture somewhere that you've taken, like, locally in Cleveland that you like to use as the backdrop in, um, you know, a, a social media post occasionally or on a listing presentation or something like that, and you want to use it a lot, then you can upload it here so that you always have access to it and you don't have to upload it every time. Um, an example for that might be like, Pat, if you love that house picture I'm that you found. <laughs> she said, I'm doing it now. So like things like that. Um, you can upload it in here, and that way you can easily use it on an image, on a designs image. And then the other one is Elements that's right under that. Um, this is kind of just like different little icons that you might put on your um, images. So examples of that might be something like the little Facebook logo. Things like that are actually already in designs. But say you had found like cute little, I hate the term clip art because it's def, like it's not it what it is so now, like but like it's uh, like the cute little like graphics or something that you might find, you yeah. know, because uh, it's not like clip art in like Microsoft Word. It's yeah. like just like cute little graphics that you might find that you want to use. You can upload them in here and then you can use them frequently. Can we help you? I'm auditing. Are you? Oh, well, I already <laughs> actually outed you about the last time you were at the back of the room and oh, Julie yeah, saw you did. on the MLS. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She caught a picture of me. I used that as an example. So. Don't be dumpy. Huh? He's a dumpy. Yeah, he's a, a don't be dumb. Don't be dumb. Hashtag don't be dumb. Well, now, Don's going to be making sure y'all are all on your commands, That's right? Uh huh. Okay, I have a question. You're yes. talking about cute little graphics. So, you know, like in Instagram, when you're going to go do a story and you want to post like a cute little mm -hmm. GIF, mm -hmm. you know, and then when you go to there, GIF, GIF, I don't know if that's the right way to say it. I say, listen to you. I'm I say, you. Well, yeah. I've heard it ever, I've looked it up. Some people say GIF, some people, people say have GIF. very strong opinions about it. So, I say GIF because it's like the word gift I'm without the T. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, GIF is J I F, like peanut butter. And yeah. Smucker's owns GIF. Who? I did not know that. The more you know. Smuckers? Yeah. I do not know. You give us. It's so <laughs> good. <Yeah. laughs> um, okay, so in there when you're searching for a GIF, you can type in, like, I love boho. So then it'll bring up all boho uh -huh. images. Can you do that through this? Like, how do I? So when we get into the designs templates that you can edit, I'll show you the okay. ones you can search. 
the library is not as large as what you might see on Instagram because that does come from the like website like Giphy I think is what it's called. Oh, yes. So there's tons of people that have uploaded those. Okay. Um, now you could like if you found the search those type of gifs or images graphics whatever like boho graphics on yeah mm -hmm. just like google images find little icons and things like that maybe mm -hmm. um and then save those to it yeah. and you could upload them in here to use them or just upload them when you're inside the design you just you can smoke a cigarette i mean like Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Okay, so these last two here, these are not fully developed here right now where it says videos and files. So that's something that will come. So it's always important to remember there's always new things coming in command. So, it's, you know, there will be um, some other types of things where you can integrate video more into the different types of things you can create for things like social media. So now that we have edited our assets <laughs> over here we're gonna go back to templates so that first place that we landed when we got into designs um so this is where we'll spend the rest of our time here so we will um look at some different designs um so the first thing i want to explain on how this works and how to help you find the design that you might be type of template you might be looking for so your left are all your general kind of themes for the um, designs you might be looking at. So KW app, for example, do you want to create a social media post to promote your app? You can click on KW app and then my app. Um, and there's all kinds of images you can use. You could take one of these pictures that has a house in it. And if you don't like that house, because does this look like something you would find in Cleveland, Tennessee? No, it's not. no. So you could take that though, say you like the, how it has this little market snapshot example and stuff like that, or what locals say. That's just kind of showing them different things that your app can do. And you simply swap out the picture. You also have other ones up here that aren't, don't have like, you know, the, the type of house pictures, but something like, you know, tour homes without leaving yours. Mm -hmm. Stay in, search on with like a cute little image of the phone. So you have mobile app ones. Well, you also have all kinds of other ones. So listings, if you've got a listing and you're going, you're wanting to market it, here's every type of template that you could use for it. So for sale, just listed, price update, neighborhood snaps, so information about the neighborhood that it's in. Are you doing an open house? You can create an open house design easily. Did you I just get one? See, we see these little words on there, these little sayings, but I don't uh -huh. know if the saying is open to her house. So we're going to look at the at a design in just a minute. Okay. Right now, I'm okay. just kind of talking through what types of um, types of templates okay. you have. I just didn't want you to assume that. No, that's okay. We're going to go into a design okay. and like look at all the editing fields. Okay. So this, I want to just give an idea of what types of templates so that when you come in to, to create one, you kind of have an idea, you know, like you know what you've got available. Mm -hmm. So say you were doing just listed. You've got all these just listed ones. And here's what's cool is you'll notice at the top of it, so it filters all of them. Well, depending on what you're creating it for, so say social wide, that's generally for, and it's going to tell you when I click it, wide format for use on Twitter, Facebook ads, and LinkedIn ads, and it tells you the size of it. So it creates its size the way that you need it for whatever you're posting it on. Same thing for social square. If you click that, it's going to tell you that it formats for use on Instagram. It can also be used on Facebook posts, and, and that's important to know. So if you used both Instagram and Facebook, you do not have to create two different designs. My recommendation is create one that fits Instagram best because it's going to keep your feed cohesive um, and then it can also show up perfectly fine on Facebook. Do you have a question? Yes. Uh -huh. I have Social Square, but how did you get Social Wide and Social Story? Uh, which one are you on? Because um, well, it depends on which one. Okay, I was on my app, so I need so to So the app one only has one. square ones? Yeah, okay. so okay. yeah, it depends on oh, which one you're in. So whatever it has available for that I'm type. There. I'm there. So social stories, if you're doing Instagram or Facebook stories, 
Um, stories are a great way to engage with the people that already do follow you and build relationships with them. And we know that building relationships is part of the business, right? So we have everything sized perfectly for those types of designs. And you can scroll through them and see the styles that you like. When we get into a design, you're gonna see how you can change the wording. Say there was one of these that you liked, but you wanted it to be for an open house. We can easily do that. So you can change anything you want to on the templates. Some It's just great for like, I need to create something fast. And then sometimes if you're like, okay, I, I've got a different idea. Let me kind of just start with this template and go from there. Mm -hmm. So you also have buyer templates. So if you don't have a listing that you want to post about, but say you're trying to bring some value to buyers, you have different buyer templates. So those might be neighborhood snapshots. You're on the left, up here. Yes, so down, going down a little bit further on there, posting about Keller Mortgage on this buyer presentation one. There's like this cool set of graphics. I love these. I haven't really seen anybody use these yet because they're, I think because they're kind of hidden. But what it is is there's like probably six or seven images within this that are basically just different like facts versus fears of home buying. So like I can't afford to buy a home is the fear, but the fact is I won't know until I talk to someone you know, until I get pre-approved or something like that. So I love these and I seriously haven't well, seen anybody easy. use those. So oh, wow. oh, great God. content. Um, and then just a couple other things that are down here that I want to make sure you all know about. I'm going to minimize these to see. So lead generation, you have some other great content here. So again, if you aren't posting, you know, because you have listings, definitely post about them. But also if all you ever post about is listings that you have, then you're only reaching people that can buy buy something right now, right? So we wanna educate and provide value. So things like home value posts, I love these. Do you know what, what your home's worth right now? You know what I mean? Contact me for a free CMA or a comparative market analysis. Most people don't know that it is free to find out what their home would be worth. So they don't know that unless somebody tells them, right? So seeing things like that. Julio, we did one of these last week, right? Is that it? We did a home value post. So do you know what the value of your home is? Um, you also have holiday greetings. I didn't know that. That's just me. Okay. So many things. I always find something hidden in here too when I'm in here, you know? So holiday greetings. These, they will have something for every major holiday or event that comes up. So right now they have Black History Month. They did um, Super Bowl. There was Groundhog Day. Make sure if you just decide no, if you are using a graphic that you see here for the Super Bowl, or you're posting something about the Super Bowl, you cannot say the word Super Bowl when you're advertising. Oh, oh really? It's patented. Um, trademark. Yes. So like okay. Facebook is like looking for things like that. Yeah. So that's why they have like the big game. So maybe if you were like, you know. Who are you rooting for this weekend? Things like that, totally fine. You just have to avoid using the word Super Bowl. So the more you know, I actually learned that recently. Um, so if you scroll down a little further on this, you can kind of see previous ones that they've had. I did not know these Groundhog Day ones were in here. Or I would have used I know, one because so they're adorable. Yeah, look at this one. I would have totally done that. Yeah, I had no clue that that one was in here. I don't even know if he saw a shot or not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do you do six more weeks of winter. <laughs> so MLK Day, New Year. So like every major holiday, there's designs in here. So you have the opportunity to always have something to post for those type of things as well. So make sure that you are showing up on, you know, anything, any days like that, like Christmas, Thanksgiving, scheduling well, out a post. Point, how do you get it on your website? <clears throat> so we're going to talk about that. Yes. We're going to okay, we are. Mm -hmm. So the rest of these, like you'll see Business Basics has like some email signature suggestions and things like that. So just make sure to click through these at some point, every like option that they have in here so that you're aware of what's all available to you. So let's go to, I'm going to go to a listing one because I want to do one where we're also swapping out a photo from the MLS. Okay. So I'm back on the listings up here at the top left. Okay. So let's do an open house one because those can be applicable to anybody. Okay. So I'm going to click open house. So I have all my options here. I want to filter it. Let's say 
Um, I want to do one for strictly like a wide social post, so for Facebook. So I'm going to do social wide, and I'm going to choose, <clears throat> I love these like ones kind of on the top here. I think I'm going to do this like one in the middle here, okay? But y'all can choose a different one if you want. It'll be the same concept, editing them. Okay, so when you're on the one you want to use, you're going to click Use. So that will open up the design in the editor. Okay. So you'll notice on the right we have the design. We have different icons over on the left, like images. You'll see my pictures automatically here. You can go down, like text is where you would see the, um, you can add text or you can go to your assets that we set up earlier and access those. Logos, all the logos are down here. Okay, so customizing the design. Okay. So <clears throat> the first thing I know we need to do is we need to change this picture to a picture of the house that the open house is at, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the picture. So make sure you click on it and you see that it's highlighted in blue, okay? Yeah. So there is a way that you can actually just swap the photos. You don't have to delete and re-add the new one and move it around. So you just want to make sure it's selected. Then over on the left, I'm going to go to KWLS. And here, you can search for a KWLS listing by any of these things. So they've actually added listing agent now. I didn't even realize that. So you can search for any of these. Um, so does anybody have a listing that we can pull? Mine is one. The house one. So I guess, yeah, we wouldn't want to, we want to use a house since it's an open it house. Like, yeah. That makes sense. At least we have, like, I don't know. What's the... Um, I just went to one of Anthony's. What, yeah, what's that one? 4400 North of Coney. 4400. Is it spelled, is North spelled out? No. Okay. Oh. And it is important to know when you're searching these, if it doesn't immediately come up, you may have to scroll. This is searching every MLS. It tries to make it is the most applicable search for you, but it is searching like all MLSs across the country. So it's come up right here. So I see the house. So I'm going to click select. And then what you'll see come up are all the pictures and the listing details. So if you're like, uh, let me make sure I got the right price or let me make sure I got the right uh, square footage might be on here, things like that, because you'll notice it's got little placeholders for those things here. So that way you don't have to leave command for any of that information because it's coming straight from KWLS. So just click on this. So I'm going to, well, I'm going to go back to photos and then what you want to do, um, find the photo we want to use as the front, like main picture. I want to just quote. That's really pretty. Wow. So let's do. Um, the outside pictures aren't great, are they? Is that the same house? Yeah, that's the back of it. Okay. I'm going to try the back one of it. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hover over it, and you see a couple options. You want to look for this, the arrows that go in a circle. That's going to swap out the image on the picture and make it in the exact place it was. Now, you might notice, like this one, it's cutting it off a little bit. So, Did you get circle that one? Not circle. Do you have the picture selected on the right? So which picture? Maybe I should move that. So, because that's click here. Oh, oh I messed it up. that's okay. Your picture's not, yeah. So make sure you just click on this and see how it's got it in blue. So then hover over the image over here that you want. No, it just shows the one. So the circle? It didn't know you were wanting to swap it out. I think. Oh. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Okay. So, actually, I have a kitchen, an outdoor kitchen, is what I have. <laughs> and it's got the picture in the uh, rest of the picture in the background. Because I think when you click at it, because it, you can tell it to add it into the background. I think so. Well, it's really hard to select the, the background and everything in front of it. So, I mean, 
Yeah, it's just reopen it that way. It'll be easier. So, <laughs> so what you can do when the picture's like this, to so see how it's cut off at the top? I can double click in it. Oops. But sometimes you have to make sure you select the right thing. So I had the wrong square. So if I double click, see how it shows me the whole picture? And I can move it however I need it to fit. Then if I realize it doesn't fit, I might want to look at another design, or I can kind of customize this to make it be what it wants. Um, so that ended up fitting pretty well on there. So all I did for that is I just double clicked the image. So this one, like I had to make sure to go out to the left because if I was in the middle, it's got that black square that kind of goes around it. So you can, if you bought something with multiple images, you swap them out that way. If you just want to add an image when you hover over it, the other options you have are add image, which is just going to pop it on the design. So that plus sign is just going to put it here and I would move it around and resize it wherever I need to go. And the other one is to make it, um, that has like the little nine dots, that's going to make it the background of the photo. <clears throat> so then I've got my image, so I need to edit the text information. So I need to, what's the date of the open house, right? So where it says Sunday, March 29th, up there at the top, if you click in the text box, so make sure the text is selected, you'll get all these options at the top, okay? So little tip that's really helpful because a lot of times I know that it can get really frustrating to try to get your, the cursor in the right place and then people end up accidentally deleting a text box. I've done it too. So what I like to do is there's this typewriter button that's right beside the font size. So if you click that, it actually opens it this way and you can edit it so I much easier. That. I wish all the, like Canva, I wish they did that. Yes, because I'm always like deleting something on accident. It's so frustrating. Yeah. So let's say, what's the date this Sunday? February 6th? No, 7th? So say it's February 7th. Um, two to four p.m. So I can edit that and then I can save changes at the bottom. And then it's put it right back in here for me. Now if it ended up being like longer than what I had initially put in there, you could change the font size at the top. Um, and that way it would all fit on top of the little red square. So sometimes you have to maneuver it a little to make it work for whatever you're creating. Um, but then you would do the same thing on the bottom here, like where we have the information about the house and the address. So where the address is, where it says 123 Spruce Road, I'll click on that. And then I go to the top and I'm going to use my typewriter button again because it's a lifesaver. <laughs> and this comes up here. So I'm going to put in the address, and then save it at the bottom, and then it pulls it in here. And see how the zip code went a little bit further down? So this is an area where I might need to resize it. So what you're going to notice when you're resizing a text box the corners are going to make your font bigger or smaller. So if I put this little, click this circle that's on the corner and I move it out, my font gets bigger or smaller. The sides with the lines on the sides, you move it over and that's gonna help you get everything on one line or if you need to get it on, on top, like in two lines. So I'm gonna move this out to the right a little bit and then <coughs> I can click on my text box and kind of move it back over to the left to get it positioned in the right place that I need to do. So that's what you'll do if it kind of gets off track a little bit in there. And then same thing here with the information about the property. You would click on that, click your typewriter button, and then you would edit all the information here. It's, it's going to keep the original formatting. So that's what's really helpful is that it, it doesn't mess up your formatting at all. It keeps it that way even when you use the typewriter button. So I'm going to leave all that information for the sake of this one, but of course you would update that. So I can click discard. So um, you'll notice it'll always do a little placeholder for the logo. What I usually do 
is delete the one that's on here. This is a scenario where I don't recommend the swapping and I'll show you why. If I click on that little DBA logo thing over there and then I come over here, it, you'll notice I click that logo and what's cool is it goes ahead and opens all my logos for me over here. So it's like reading my mind. You just did it when you clicked it? I mean, I did a different um, template than you, so maybe. Oh, I okay. I got stuck on this. I don't think it's clicked on it. It's clicking on the back of it. Click this little X. Like, okay, so now I'll like double click on it. Oh, there it is. Okay. You did what, Pat? Oh, I got stuck on the hover. On the. So oh, hovering yeah, on the. I cleaned it all up. The picture? Oh, good. No, it doesn't hover. Your picture has to be selected. So click on the picture. Run it. Uh -huh. And yeah. see how it's got the blue around it. So that's yep. Yep. Perfect. Right. Awesome. So. I just about the typing. I got that part. Yeah. I just. That's okay. So now I'm going to go down to. <laughs> So the logo thing, so when I have the logo selected, if I come over to the right and I swap it out, see how it makes this little, it moved it down and it's kind of like a square mm -hmm. and it's a little blurry if you look up close to it. So it doesn't pull the full like integrity of the logo when you do that. So I just use it as a reminder to add the logo and I'll click on it and delete it. So to delete something, you literally just select it and you can hit delete on your keyboard. And then I come over to my logos over here on the left, and I'll just click which one I want. So say I want the red and gray, and it adds it right in the middle for me. I can move it, and then moving anything, you're just clicking and dragging it. Then, of course, I want to resize it. <laughs> so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller here. <clears throat> um, this, of course, doesn't have, like if this had, if this design had your name <coughs> on it somewhere, keep in mind the advertising rules of like, your um, name can't be bigger than the logo, but in this case, there's not anything like that on it here, so. Um, no, almost there. What happened? So I got the logo, yeah. click that, so then you can just drag that this way. And you can use the corners to make it a little bit smaller, and then I just kinda usually drag it back to where it had the, the example one, but also if you see a place that would fit better, you can always do that, and that's the great thing about designs is you're not committed to like exactly where something is on there, right? So then once we have that logo on there, our design yeah, is ready. I don't know if I... So you just hold, like you. click on your keyboard and then just kind of move it. Oh, I'm so too it's too so, Yeah, so just hold your finger down on the brush if you need it. <clears throat> okay, so for this design. You know what I'm noticing? Mm -hmm. I see in the top left where it says each office is independent. I thought yes. it was the each color one. So this is the default one that comes into it. Oh, okay. So what you can do is you can click on it just like we did the rest of the text mm -hmm. and just do, I recommend doing the typewriter. I think it's a Tennessee thing that we're supposed to technically have the office name in that because um, it's obviously not a Keller Williams thing because – they put it in here like that. That's what's uh, so I get really confused on that, but I think yeah. it's a Tennessee real estate thing. So you can just use the typewriter to edit it. Um, and so we don't need to add anything else on this one. Our design is good. And so what you can do from here, so you can download your design in the top right. Uh, no, because I don't. I didn't like the thing. And you of course don't have to download this one because you're not you know, actually post in this one or whatever, but you would click, you can click download at the top. You have a couple different options to download designs. So whether it's a JPEG, a PNG, or a PDF. So JPEGs and PNGs are your general options for images. That's what you're going to be doing. And it typically will default to what's preferred for the type of design you're making. So um, PDF will be more for your print marketing and it will typically default to that, I think. So Say you were going to download this one, you can click Start Download, and then you could just go straight from here and upload it to Facebook if you want to. It'll put it in your Downloads folder on your computer if I click Start Download. So it'll say it's preparing my file. Now, of course, I'm going to try to, you know, show, show you how you can stay in command with all these things. So what you can also do is you can 
did you guys know you can schedule out social media posts from in command? So in face, say you can go into Facebook and you can schedule out posts for a later date and time. It makes social media not feel as overwhelming because you don't feel like you have to be posting all the time. You can set aside, say, an hour a week and schedule out how many posts that you want to do. Um, and then plan when you want those dates and times for them. But you can also do that all in command. So really quickly, I know we're a couple minutes over on time, but so if any of y'all need to go, that's totally fine. But I do want to show you how you can take this into that. That's true. Pat is my appointment. Is that okay, Pat? It's taking me like a minute. Okay. As Dom takes my time. Pat, you're you're right. Like Look at this. Pat, I think he's just trying to be wherever you are. He just wants to, to breathe the air you breathe. <laughs> Did you have a question, Julio? I'll, I'll wait till the end. Oh, okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do from here, so I'm going to click Done at the top, in the top right. It's going to save my design, and it's going to take me right back here. So you'll actually see that most recent design right okay. here. Um, and that's why I have all these here. These are just random designs that I've done in here. So you'll always see the ones you've created recently. So I wanted to go from here and schedule this out to social media. Over on the left, I can go to the campaigns logo, which is the megaphone. So campaigns, that can throw you off sometimes because it's not just paid campaigns. This is actually also where you can go for social posts. So there's in here you can do paid ads, email campaigns, direct mail, and social posts. So you do have to have your um, Facebook business page connected to command to actually schedule it out. And so if you haven't done that, you have to check in your settings. That would be where you click your name in the top right in your settings. Um, but what's cool is it will actually tell you, so like if I go to create a new campaign in the top right and I do social post, <coughs> if you don't have any accounts connected, it's going to let you know that. I think you do want so I now I want to okay. So what it does is it just takes me here. I can type my caption here. It also has a little smiley face in the bottom right corner where you can use emojis and you can search on it. Okay, so I don't know about y'all, but I'll be like, where is that? Um, like, whatever emoji on my phone, I'm like, scroll, 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 scroll. It is proven that emojis get better, help you get better engagement on posts because I think they just help, like, the eye to naturally gravitate towards other lines. They're like pretty bullet points, you know? So even if you're like, I'm not an emoji person, put them, try to put one or two of them in your posts. So you can search them too, which this, I just love that. So I click how, I type house. And it shows me all these. Be careful of the last one. If you don't look close enough, you can't tell, but it's like a little, like decrepit little house. So, you know, if you're like fixer upper and <laughs> use that. <laughs> so it's because it's like cracked and boarded up. So <clears throat> you would write your <coughs> caption here. And what you can actually do down here where it says upload photo, it defaults to choose from designs. And I can click Browse Design Library, and it's going to show me all of my designs that I've done. So if I click on that open house one, sometimes if you do it too soon, it tells you it's not ready yet, and then it will basically do what it needs to do to make it ready. So we'll see if it loads for me or not. It also can overlay the logo and the disclaimer on any of your posts too, which is really awesome. So if you didn't put the logo on stuff and you schedule it out through here, you basically never have to put the logo on it because it will do it for you. Okay, so it did the thing where it said it wasn't ready. So now I'm gonna click Browse Designs again. And click the image. Then it comes up here and it defaults for whatever type of placement I need. So it defaults to the square. But if I'm just doing it on Facebook, I want to change it to wide. And then it fits perfectly. So I click crop image. Except I don't really want it to post, so I'm not going to. Yeah, we don't really want to post this. <laughs> but, yeah. So the concept, though, so now you'll see the images here. You can add your text here. You can do multiple images so that it does the carousel. Um, and then... You can tell it if you didn't have the like disclaimer on it, you can tell it to add that by clicking include my ownership statement. And then you tell it when you want it to post. Schedule post or publish immediately. 
And if you're scheduling it, you just click down here and it's going to show you a calendar and show you what day you want to click on. And then say I was clicking tomorrow or that, that was tomorrow. I had the wrong one selected. And then at the bottom, it has the time. So then it would say, okay, it's going to post it February 5th, 2021 at 10 a.m. And then you would just click schedule at the top and then you could go in and create another one. So you can basically go through and create a couple designs, then take them into this campaigns thing and schedule them out. It'll show you also um, a calendar. So if you're, if I click back to social posts, so if you're in campaigns with the header, it says social posts up here, I can see a calendar. So this week, is there anything scheduled? It'll show it to you. So you don't have to go on to social media to schedule everything out so you don't get like distracted because I know that's what happens all the time is you go to post and then it's like, scroll, scroll, what are they talking about? And then like, wait, I haven't posted anything yet and it's been an hour. And so this will help with the productivity, right, as well. So um, social media doesn't have to be overwhelming. It just takes, you know, a little bit of time and use the systems that you have and that's going to make it all easier too. And this is just Facebook? So you can do Facebook and Twitter. Oh, okay. You cannot do Instagram I yet. I top down. I'm going to have to do all channel select. Uh -huh. Facebook and Twitter. Oh, yeah. yeah, so you can do Facebook and Twitter right now. Okay. Instagram will probably come. They actually only recently started letting you schedule out posts to Instagram. It has to be done from Facebook, so your accounts have to be joined. Yeah. So, like, I do that for our office one. But you can't go on to the Instagram platform and schedule them directly there to post. Okay. So that's why it's not available. Um, Instagram really doesn't want that functionality in their app because their goal is to get you on the app and, get the, like, and mm -hmm. keep you there. Yep. And if you're scheduling out your posts, you're then they're, you're not even on the app and you're not scrolling. Um, so just, you know, a lot of the kind of work inner workings in the background of social media. However, um, you can, like, what I would do is, like, schedule it to, say, Facebook and then just save it to your, like, to your phone or something from there and then just copy your caption and post it there. That's what I do sometimes with our office one. If the pictures have to be sized a little differently, then I'll just, like, copy it on there and post from it. But eventually, I imagine if it becomes a thing, they'll have that capability in command as well, too. All right, Julio, what was your question? I'm not in it. Oh, perfect. <laughs> All right, do y'all have any more questions before we go? Awesome. Any ahas from what you it's saw in the second time around? Huh? It's better the second time around. Yeah. Good. So, you know, it's, it's kind of docu sign. You know, the more you do it, the more you understand. That's right. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, and I think that there's always like, can always pick up something new, you know, or there's something new that they've added since the last time you come to a class or something like that because they're always changing things and making it better. So um, hope to see y'all creating lots of awesome designs on social media. Of course, if you guys need help with them, let me know if you run into any issues. But I would encourage you to go into the designs library where we started and look through every type that's in there. That'll get you kind of like in your mind knowing what's available and knowing what because you might be like, oh, I wouldn't have even thought to post something like that. Okay, let me have that and, you know, file that back in my brain. So when something like that comes up, I know what kind of post I can do. I'd love to somebody, see somebody use the facts versus fears one. Yeah. <laughs> I really think that one's but, cool. You'll have to yeah, look on I those. I just thought it would already have the facts and fears there that we wouldn't have to think of. What they are there. there. You just have to click on it. And then it actually has like seven different ones in there. Oh, I didn't um, know that. Yeah, it was so. so I think oh. that's why a lot of people have just glazed over um, it. it like you yes, yes I would too. Yes. Yeah. I don't want to have to think about it. Think of it. Yeah. It gives you a, te a, a template where you can insert your own on one of them. So if you oh. thought of something, but then it's got like five or six other ones. Like the, the one I mentioned I got from there, it was like, I can't afford to buy a home. I won't know until I talk to someone, you know, yeah. so things like that. And then. Then you're educating people, so especially yeah. your first-time home buyers or your first-time sellers. Even if somebody's bought a home, they don't know much about selling a home, right? So it's still their first time to, to do either of those things. So you are there, the person to educate them on those things as well. So think about ways that you can educate people on your platform because that is going to help you build those relationships as well. And that's going to, like, things like that, that I, there's so much that I would have never known had I never worked here and that, that I know about how real estate 
works now and how buying a home works now. But I would have never known that without working here. So think about all the people that aren't in this in the real estate like field. They there's so many things that they don't know about like, okay, well what is what does escrow mean? Like what is what's earnest money? Like things think about things that you learned and how what's important for those people to know and how you can educate them on and create little cool designs on it so that you can do that. Because then people will remember like the person that taught them those. Like, oh, I always look forward to, like, Julio does this post once a week about, like, what's going on in the market or, like, you know, first-time buyer tips on Fridays or something like that, you know? That's what people are going to, like, you have to create consistency around it and then just keep showing up for it, and that's what's really going to help grow your, your, like, following on there and engaging with the people that are already on there. All righty.